Hi there, and welcome to this week's DE Hammer video. Today, we're going to discuss the use of a spring-loaded diamond drag bit, like this one. Now, if you watch my How to Cut Acrylic video, I used a V-bit to do the detail work. As I was new to CNC back then, I did not know about this bit, but luckily the great Facebook communities out there shared their wisdom and said, hey, you should get one of these. So I ordered one and got to engraving my acrylic, and I have to say, I love these bits. Now, my favorite thing about these is I only have to do one pass, saving a lot of time. Um, you're also going to save hours of running your spindle uh, because this bit engraves by pressure and friction. And thirdly, no more worrying if you have set your engraved depth far enough and some of your detail work uh, does not engrave due to the varying thickness of the acrylic. So let's look at how this bit works. Now, a drag bit does just as its name says. It drags across the surface. The engraving is produced by downward pressure and the friction from dragging. 0.5 millimeter width, so it can achieve very fine detail work. They also come in varying degrees, as other V-bits do, but as the manufacturer of my drag bit states, that when you go to the 60 degree bit, please keep in mind that the 60 degree tool is very delicate and is not intended to make deep cuts. Due to the fact they are so delicate, we cannot guarantee the diamond itself against breakage or wear. So I have just stuck to the 90 degree bit, but we'll let you guys know if I try out the 60 degree one. Uh, another thing you also want to pay attention to is the diameter so you can have the correct cullet uh, for it when it gets in. Now, there are two types of drag bits, spring loaded and non-spring loaded. A non-spring loaded drag bit is just a metal rod with a tip. So if you do not set your engraved depth deep enough, you could end up with a missed areas in your graving, just like a V-bed. So while the spring-loaded costs more, I suggest paying that difference. With a spring-loaded drag bit, you go about setting your Z home normally, but before you set it, find out the greatest difference in thickness in your stock material. In my case, the acrylic's uh, greatest thickness is 4.85 millimeters, and the thinnest part is 4.66 millimeters, giving me a difference of 0.19 millimeters. So now I know I want to go down a minimum of 0.2 millimeters before setting the Z. Now, if I set it only to 0.2 millimeters down from where the paper catches and ran this, we should be fine. But that is only giving us room of 0.1 millimeters. So I would like to have the bit apply a little bit more pressure. So I dropped the Z another 0.1 millimeters to 0.3 millimeters. So I have either gone down a total of 0.3 millimeters or 0.5 millimeters once my paper catches. Another thing you want to watch out for is applying too much pressure as that will cause you to cut deeper into your material than you want it to. And for you daredevils out there that set your retract height to 0.5 millimeters, you're not going to clear the material as the pressure from the spring will push the bit down back into the acrylic. So I set my retract height to 2 millimeters just to be on the safe side. These bits are also uh, typically longer than your normal bit as they have to fit the spring-loaded mechanism. Mine is just under 51 millimeters. Uh, between my spoil board of 14 millimeters and a five millimeter uh, acrylic, I have about three to five millimeters of space before I hit the top Z stop switch. So make sure you measure out that you will have enough room to retract. As mentioned earlier in the video, I said you do not have to run your spindle with this bit. This is not only prolongs the life of your spindle, it is also much quieter. One issue I did run into was the setting when you're trying to export uh, the G-code. For Carbide Create, you cannot put a value of zero for your spindle speed. And it took me a bit to find out that if you put one for your spindle speed, it removes the M03 in your G-code, which is a code that turns your spindle on. Really, that was the only thing that tripped me up when I first started using these. Now, for other G-Code making software, I'm not sure if this will work or if you can set it to zero. 
If that does not work for you, just open up your G code and remove the MO3 line at the top of your code and then go to the bottom and remove the M05 line, which turns the spindle off. And you should see that line right before the M02. For my feed rate setting, I found that on my 3018, I can increase my normal uh, 225 feed rate for acrylic to about 250 millimeters. What you want to watch out for is going too fast that your bit starts to lag behind the X and Y axis movements or is no longer in line with the center of your spindle. For depth, I still do a 0.1 millimeter to 0.15 millimeter, but I have seen other set theirs to 0.05 millimeters. I've just not had time to experiment with that setting yet. But the main takeaway is you want to find a balance in speed and pressure to get those nice clean lines. And that about wraps it up for this video. So if you could not tell, I'm a big fan of these bits and I highly recommend you try them out. If you wanna see more videos like this, remember to hit the subscribe button. And as always, if you have any questions, give me a shout out in the comments below. I am currently in the works of upgrading my workspace in the garage. So be on the lookout for those videos as I document building my CNC workbenches and enclosures. So until next time, keep making stuff.